What is up, guys? This is Alex from Double Move Sports back today with another perfect off-season breakdown video. This series has been incredibly fun where I take a team, I look at uh, the roster that they have in place, the cap space they have, their draft assets as well, and I put together what would be the perfect off-season from a personnel perspective for this specific organization to either compete in 2021 or to start rebuilding. I've done a lot of teams on the channel. Check those out if you haven't already. Hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy this here today. But today I'm getting into the New York Giants, and this one actually was a lot of fun to put together. Um, the Giants are coming off of a, a tough 6-10 and 10 season. They were competitive, but they were really dominated by injuries. Obviously, Saquon Barkley is the big one, but a lot of other key pieces in and out of the lineup as well. Daniel Jones, um, Sterling Shepard, amongst others. And it was a disappointing season overall for Daniel Jones. He didn't take the strides that I really wanted to see him take. You know, you think about Josh Allen. He's improved so consistently each and every year. After some of the promise we saw from Daniel Jones as a rookie, I was really hopeful he would take a big step forward in year two. He did not. So whether it was the injuries, whether it was something else, um, remains to be seen. But I think you give Daniel Jones one more year with a healthier roster in place to see if he can make some of the improvements that we would like to see him make. But when you look at this Giants team, they have a lot of young talent in place, and they also have 15 to $30 million in projected cap space. So we are going to have the ability to re-sign some of these guys and maybe make a splash signing in free agency as well. But we will get into that. And the first thing I want to do is go ahead and look at the roster and look at potential cuts um, that the Giants could make of veterans to increase that 15 to $30 million of projected cap space. And the first name I picked out here is Golden Tate. This should be no surprise. He actually had some um, disagreements with the coaching with the front office last season, led to him being deactivated for a game, has had some injury struggles as well. He's getting a little bit older. And cutting Golden Tate actually saves the Giants $6 million in cap space. So that one, I think, is a no-brainer with Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton still in play there at the wide receiver spot. And another guy that I think it makes sense to cut is Nate Soldier. He opted out last season, and it sounds like he actually might retire. Um, but for this video, I want a lot of clarity to what this offense is going to look like, what the offensive line is going to look like. So we're going to go ahead and assume that Nate Soldier either retires or is cut, which is going to save the Giants $10 million more in cap space. They can find a younger option at that position at tackle. So... That's it, guys. Golden Tate and Nate Soldier should give the Giants around $16 million in additional cap space on top of the 15 to $30 million that they are projected to have available. So a lot of flexibility to make some moves and improve the roster. But next, let's look at the Giants that are set to hit the open market that they're going to have the option to try to bring back uh, on longer term deals. So we'll go through this list. We got Leonard Williams, Kyler Fackrell. Cameron Fleming, Dion Lewis, Wayne Gallman, Jabal, Sheer, Jabal Sheard, Dalvin Tomlinson, and Austin Johnson. And we'll just go through these one by one. The first name on the list is the biggest one. It's Leonard Williams' defensive end. And to me, they need to find a way to bring Leonard Williams back on a long-term deal. He is the dynamic pass rusher that this defense seriously cannot afford to lose a major playmaker, and if they lose Leonard Williams, they're going to lose all identity in the pass rush game unless they bring one in early in the draft or another big name in free agency in a deep free agent class of pass rushers. But Leonard Williams has been productive for this Giants team. I don't think it makes sense to let him go for a defense that really started to come on um, towards the end of last season. So Leonard Williams, yes, it's going to take up a lot of that cap, but I think he is a talented player that they need um, as kind of that centerpiece to build around on the defensive side of the ball. Moving down the list, Kyler Fackrell, outside linebacker. He did have a decent year last season, but to me, to be able to bring Leonard Williams back and do some of the things we want to do later in this video, they need to let go of Fackrell, but we will address the linebacker spot later on in the draft. Next, Cameron Fleming. Um, they can let go of him and slide second-year uh, player Matt Pert into the tackle spot opposite of Andrew Thomas for the time being. Fleming did, I mean... Not a great job of filling in for Nate Soldier, who opted out last season, but he was a, he was a starting lineman. But I, I think you can slide Matt Pert into that spot 
um, for the time being with the roster construction that they have and have two really young, promising guys who still need some development but could develop into really solid tackles in Pert and Andrew Thomas. Next, Deion Lewis and Wayne Gallman. Quite frankly, you have Saquon Barkley on this team. You don't need either of these guys. Gallman did show some really good flashes last year, did a really good job of filling in for Saquon Barkley, a really hard runner. But with Lewis and Gallman, I think you can go ahead and let them go. Barkley should be back at full strength heading into next season, and he is your workhorse running back. So you don't need either of these two veterans. Now to finish off the defensive side of the ball here, Jabal Sheard. More of a depth piece on the defense. They can let him go and look for a younger option. If they want that rotational production, maybe pick someone up in the draft or a depth piece in free agency as well that might be a little bit younger, a little bit more affordable for this team. And now the defensive tackles. you got Dalvin Tomlinson and Austin Johnson. I think you let Austin Johnson go, but it's because you want to bring back Dalvin Tomlinson here. He is a great run stopper in the middle of this defense. And if you want to bring back Leonard Williams, get that elite pass rusher. You also want to bring back Dalvin Tomlinson, really give you an identity on that defensive line. Get someone who can stop the run as well and really build a solid core with Leonard Williams and Dalvin Tomlinson in the middle of that defense. So I love the idea of bringing back Tomlinson as well. So we'll throw it up on the screen here really quickly. We're only going to bring back of these names, Leonard Williams and Dalvin Tomlinson. We're going to let go of Kyler Fackrell. Cameron Fleming, Deion Lewis, Wayne Gallman, Jabal Sheard, and Austin Johnson. The Giants have some more names that are going to be free agents. You know, this isn't the entire list, but these were the key contributors, the key playmakers, some of those depth pieces, some of those backups. I'm sure they'll bring some back to fill out the roster, but we're not going to break down every single name here. So these are really the key guys that we wanted to get into in this video. Next, we're going to look at NFL free agency. And I know we probably just gave Leonard Williams a big contract. Dalvin Tomlinson's not necessarily going to be cheap either, but I think with some of the cuts we made and the cap space that was available, we're going to have room to squeeze in one splash signing here in free agency, and I know they're going to sign more guys to fill out the roster, but the one position I would love to see the Giants address here is the wide receiver spot. Remember, we cut Golden Tate earlier in the video. Daniel Jones needs a true alpha number one receiver. You know, Shepard and Slayton are both solid NFL receivers, but neither of them has really shown the ability to be that true alpha wide receiver one, like you see Patrick Mahomes have in Tyree Kill or Aaron Rodgers have in Devontae Adams. And this wide receiver class in free agency has the potential to be very deep. There's tons of star receivers set to hit the open market. You got Chris Godwin, Allen Robinson, Kenny Galladay, Juju Smith-Schuster. Even if you get a little deeper into some veterans, A.J. Green, T.Y. Hilton, Marvin Jones. Curtis Samuel is an emerging younger wide receiver that could hit the open market as well. But of all these names, we're going big. This is the perfect offseason video for the Giants. So we're going to say they bring in Allen Robinson from the Chicago Bears. He would be the true alpha wide receiver one that the Giants so desperately needs, uh, that Daniel Jones so desperately needs. And, you know, that would give them Allen Robinson um, as your true go-to wide receiver one. You still have Sterling Shepard, who's a fantastic possession receiver, and Darius Slayton who is a big play guy and a deep threat. So that would be an awesome trio of wide receivers with Saquon Barkley at running back, Evan Ingram at tight end. There would be no excuses for Daniel Jones moving forward. And by bringing in Allen Robinson, you can truly see what you have in Daniel Jones. I know the offensive line still has some weaknesses and could use some work, but you would give Daniel Jones arguably the best group of weapons and playmakers in the NFL and if he can't get it done with those guys, he's not going to be able to get it done at all. But maybe getting a true alpha wide receiver one is what Daniel Jones needs with Saquon Barkley back in the offense as well with some health to this team to really take that next step forward. So I would love to see this Allen Robinson signing. It would be huge for New York and for Daniel Jones. Um, and that's the big splash signing of free agency for the Giants in this scenario. And last but not least, we're going to move on to the NFL draft. We're going to cover the Giants First, second, and third round picks. They have some picks in around four through seven as well, but those are our deeper picks. The hit rate is typically a little bit lower. So we're really going to look at the guys who could make an impact right off the bat. And really quickly, let's look at their draft capital in those first three rounds. In round one, they have pick 11. In round two, they have pick 42. And in round three, pick 76. And in round one, we are going to address that linebacker position. And the pick here is Micah Parsons. Linebacker out of Penn State, an incredibly versatile playmaker, arguably the best overall defender in this draft class. 
And with Leonard Williams back, rushing the passer, with Tomlinson back, stopping the run in the middle, the Giants in Micah Parsons could get a true do-it-all linebacker to be the middle centerpiece of this defense, to run this defense as a leader into the future. I mean, Parsons can tackle, he can play coverage, he can rush the passer, he can kind of do anything you need him to do, and someone with that versatility would be a huge asset for a Giants defense that really came on strong towards the end of last season. So that would be a huge win for them in the first round if Parsons can fall to number 11 and they can go ahead and take him there. Now in round two with pick 42, we're actually going to address the offensive line. I know their offensive line is pretty much going to be in place. I mean, I know we let go of Nate Soldier by cutting him, but he had opted out last season anyway. His fill-in, Cameron Fleming, we let go in free agency, but we think Matt Pert is going to slide into that spot. But we're actually going to address the interior of this offensive line and go with Wyatt Davis, guard out of Ohio State. And the reason being is that this offensive line could really use a lift. I mean, Kevin Zeitler played solid um, as that veteran guard up front. But between Nick Gates, Will Hernandez, and Shane Lemieux, there was a lot to be desired last season, especially in the running game. I will say they improved as the season went on. Wayne Gallman had several really good games with some really good running lanes. But by picking up Wyatt Davis, you get a good run blocker to give this young offense a boost. Um, he has the potential to have a very, very strong pro career. So with Wyatt Davis, you just get another option to really emerge and be a playmaker at the guard spot. We see how important it can be. You know, Quentin Nelson in Indianapolis has really taken that line to be one of the best run blocking offensive lines in the NFL. Obviously, you need talent all the way across the front of that line, but having a solid anchor in there. Um, that can be someone that's, you know, just the captain of that unit for years to come is very, very important. So I know Zeitler is kind of that guy right now, but Wyatt Davis to me is almost a passing of the torch as Zeitler gets older in his career. Wyatt Davis could be that next awesome interior offensive lineman for the New York Giants. And last but not least, in round three with pick 76, we're going to go Tyson Campbell, cornerback out of Georgia. You bring some young talent to the secondary you know, Logan Ryan shifted over to safety and played pretty decent last season. So the Giants could really use some depth and playmakers alongside James Bradbury um, at the cornerback position. And Tyson Campbell, he has size, he has physicality. It should give the defense a lift. It gives him the ability to match up against some of these big wide receivers in the NFL. And with Bradbury shadowing some of these wide receiver ones, I think Tyson Campbell coming into the league could play right off the bat and step in and guard some of these wide receiver twos um, on these offenses. So Tyson Campbell gives you a great option at the cornerback spot, gives you some youth, gives you a development project. But in a defense that has a lot of really good veterans, you could bring in Micah Parsons in round one, Tyson Campbell here in round three, and really get some youth, some athleticism, and some physicality to give this defense a boost. So really quickly, let's recap this NFL draft. In round one, Micah Parsons, linebacker out of Penn State. In round two, Wyatt Davis, guard out of Ohio State. And in round three, Tyson Campbell, cornerback out of Georgia. And guys, that is going to do it for this video. But before we sign off, as always, I'm going to recap everything we walked through here today, starting with guys we're going to let go. So first, we're going to cut Golden Tate and Nate Soldier, save some cap space there as we look to re-sign some guys, look to free agency. In free agency, we are going to let go of Kyler Fackrell, Cameron Fleming, Deion Lewis, Wayne Gallman, Jabal Sheard, and Austin Johnson. Now let's look at guys we're re-signing or bringing into this Giants team. You're going to re-sign Leonard Williams and Dalvin Tomlinson on that defensive line. In free agency, you're going to go out and you're going to sign Allen Robinson, star wide receiver. And then in the draft, you pick up Micah Parsons, linebacker out of Penn State, Wyatt Davis on that offensive line, and Tyson Campbell, cornerback out of Georgia, to really give this defense some youth. And then earlier, as we mentioned, Allen Robinson really could give Danny Dimes that true alpha wide receiver one that he needs in this offense. So that's it, guys. That uh, concludes this New York Giants perfect offseason video. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, what would you have done differently? What things did I do well here? Also, let me know what team you want to see me break down next. We are continuing to roll through these teams. It has been a lot of fun. Last but not least, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. But again, this is Alex from Double Move Sports, and we'll see you next time.